morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning. How are you doing today? Good. Doing great. All right. Um, just uh, give us a review of uh, the units and uh, how they performed. Had some, uh, you know, had a couple good returns there in, in the uh, Giants game. You know, I thought we had some uh, areas of improvement that we were focusing on last week when it came to the return game, making the most out of situations, especially when teams were either sky kicking the ball to, you know, whether it's um, CP or to Keith. The number one thing is making sure that we have the football in the next play for our offense. So getting that done, and then Avery, uh, you know, as a returner, making the most out of those situations. I think he had like a 12 or 13 yard return plus the penalty to add on to it. And then when we had him backed up, being able to, you know, put our offense in good field position and plus territory. So those things came into play. Coverage wise, we could continue to get better on keeping leverage on the football. Um, we had one kickoff cover, which worked out in our favor. The returner dropped it, and then we're able to keep leverage on it for a six-yard return. And then, you know, Cam, you know, had he had a better day. It was awesome to see him improve and go out there and, and perform at a high level and get the ball where we needed to be. Um, still areas of improvement, still working on, you know, all phases of special teams, getting better. And then obviously, you know, Koo finished the game for us, you know, putting the ball through our price to help us seal the game. And the uh, punt, how, how big was the punt uh, by Cam right before the half? It wasn't his longest punt, but it was probably the best, best place punt. Yeah, it was one of the better place punts. Uh, he did a good job getting the ball out, you know, getting up and through the football, trusting and relying on his technique and his basic fundamentals. And we could, we could to continue to do a better job getting downfield and covering and not letting the guy get vertical in that uh, return. But still, um, we're in a good position and we feel comfortable, you know, with Cam and what he's doing. And he's, we talked about it last week and we talked about it in the punter uh, evaluation and training camp, continual growth. And you can see that from Cam you know, from this past weekend. So we continue to work on it this week and see, see where we go from there. Cam, how can you, uh, how can Cam you obviously simulate? Had, go for it, Scott. Cam obviously had a couple of punts against Tampa that he liked to have back. Mm -hmm. um, and then you brought in some competition. But how did you see, what did you like about his response to those types of things? You know, um, just, you know, like all that. He faced some adversity. He had a veteran come in. And what, how do you, uh, what I liked most about what Cam, you know, took into going into last week was focusing on himself. In order for him to be the best teammate, it was doing his job and focusing on his fundamentals and his technique when it came to that position and not necessarily looking over his shoulder. So that was great to see um, and being resilient when it came to that. Because sometimes, you know, as individuals, you could be comparing or worried about that person that's next to you or you're competing with rather than your best competition is yourself. So. Him going into last week, focusing and really getting dialed in on the details and the fundamentals, and then having the right mindset going into that game. And it was awesome to see him perform that way last weekend. How do you work? I mean, before here, you worked with Prater too, right? Like, yes, sir. So how do you work? How do you simulate? How do you create pressure for game winning kicks? Uh, you know, I, I, how, how do you go about doing that? I think more so. People get fixated on you know the pressure kick, end of half, end of game, to take the lead, under two minutes, end of half, end of game, to tie the game, whatever the case may be. Or it could be a kick to put us up. It could be under four minutes, put us up two scores. The biggest thing for our room and for those individuals, whether it was working with Prater or here working with Koo, and wherever I've been or where I've worked with the special teams, is really being dialed in in your fundamentals and your technique. Because you could get fixated on hey, the outcome of that play, or it's an end of game, or I got to make this kick, rather than working on your technique, your approach on football, how you take the field before you approach the football, your steps, okay, to contact on the football. So when we get in those situations, I mean, the situation is the situation, but we're really focused on the actual fundamentals of technique and our approach and our mindset going into that one rep play. Is there a, a, a specific type of mental makeup or mental Character, maybe that you look for in a kicker in that situation, but whether you know whether you try to treat it like fundamental as well, there's still something there that differentiates that. I'd say. I think short-term memory, having that short-term memory, you see that you know I coached defensive backs before, and you see that with defensive backs, you could give up a big play, but being able to come back the very next play and being able to execute your particular uh, technique on that next down, because the most important down is is that down. So. You know, the mindset when it comes to having a short-term memory, because you could go into a pregame, you may miss five out of your 10 kicks in a pregame. 
or you might miss that one PAT going into half or going into the locker room before the game starts. But that doesn't matter because the next opportunity is the, the best opportunity. So having a short term memory, I think, is big when it comes to playing that position, as it is for all positions on foot in the on football. Going into that uh, game winning kick. Where was your heart rate? Like, where was your level of nerves? And maybe why was it at the rate of that? I, to be straight up honest with you, I didn't have any nerves. Because we, well, all 11 guys just doing their job. Uh, we trust all 11 guys that are on the field at any given time. And we work various situations. But we, as a, as a team and as a staff, we really focus in on the details and the fundamentals. And when it comes to that, whatever play it is, whether it's the end of half, you know, our end of game field goal, or it's the first PAT of the game. It just, we got to win that down from the, you know, the snap, the protection, and then the hold, and then Koo just making contact on the football. So my heart rate was no different than any other play because we weren't worried about the outcome. We were just worried about the play at the time. Did you have to teach yourself that? Yeah, just being in the present. That's one thing, you know. Back in 2017, Kobe Bryant spoke to the team when I was with the Chargers, and one thing that he talked about was being obsessed with the present. And that's easy to say, but it's hard to do. And as a coach, um, I try to do that every single time we're on the practice field and even when we're in games, because sometimes you can go on a lull as a person because you're not in the present, because you're worried about what happened in the past or you're too focused on what's going to happen in the future. So that's why the present's called a gift. You got to be in the present when it comes to everyday life on the field and off the field. And that's something that I try to do as a coach and I try to help as a staff. We try to do it too. And I, we try to help our players stay in the present because that down is the most important play and now allows us to focus on how we could get our players better for the next opportunity. Yeah, coach, with, with Corderell doing so much, you know, offense, defense, you know, special team, yes, what's y'all's management plan for him doing the game? Somebody track uh, what, you know, what, what he's, you know, doing on offense and when you're going to need him for special teams and when he's got to get back over there. I guess how, how do y'all manage all that? I guess it's a good problem to have right. when it comes to a dynamic player like CP. Uh, we more so just pay attention to, you know, how's, how's it going on offense, you know, how, where's his reps are at. It's more so in the present, too, like how's he doing at that time if he could be able to go for the next down. And CP is a tough and he's well-conditioned player and it's both mentally and physically. So. You know, sometimes we got to get him off the field for his particular special teams, but he's always raring to go and he's, he's always ready to go. So just making sure that we're taking care of him when we're not, you know, burning him out too much. But great player. He does a great job of being in the present when it comes to those particular special teams plays. And he understands, like, you know, special teams is what made him who he is in the NFL. And he's all in on special teams, which is awesome. It's a great problem to have when he's playing well on offense and he's an impact player on special teams. So his backup guy at all those spots got to be, you know, a lot, but no one y'all are oh, yeah. ready. We do a great job. I mean, Coach Hoff, myself, you know, Coach Smith and CP and then the other players when it comes to like Gunner or whatever, they, we do a good job of just being in the present and making sure that we're communicating and we're watching those offensive plays and making sure, hey, where are we at with this particular phase, what we're going to, you know, get, who could be available for this particular uh, position at that time. How much did you know about the young ladies? Story through the league when you took this job? I knew a lot of it actually because I was with uh, Young Way when we signed him as an undrafted uh, free agent when I was with the Chargers. And it was pretty cool. It was a special moment for Ku as it is for the whole team, but particularly for Ku because his first, um, he got cut after our fourth game of the season. And we were getting going into that week, we were getting ready for the New York Giants to play at MetLife. So it was going to be his first time playing close to home 2017. And he, he never got the chance to do it. So the very next opportunity was this past weekend. So it was cool to be a part of that and see the growth from 2017 to now. And then to see him you know, go out there and execute at a high level and put our team in a position to win the game. It was an awesome opportunity for Ku and our team. Yeah. What, what growth have you seen from him, from the guy that you knew then to the guy you know now? I mean, he, he found his groove. He found his way. You know, he's very resilient when it comes to his overall approach and how he is as a, as a player and as a man on and off the field. And to see him find what works for him and the discipline that he has and how and then the commitment. He was committed before, but he's even more committed now when it comes to his approach and how he views the game and how he's holding others accountable around him. And 
because he has a high expectation to do his job at a high level, so he expects that around for his other his other teammates, whether it's the specialists um, or himself as well. And it's great to see him grow as an individual when it comes to that. But he's a football player that just what happens is he kicks kicks the ball through the uprights. How much do you think he can kind of be an example to to other players? I mean, not just in this league, but on this team, like where you have a young player that maybe, you know, hasn't broken through yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you know, it takes a couple of years to get to that point. How do you feel like he can kind of be an example of that? I think Tori, you know, just telling the story, you know, he's living proof of, you know, being able to stay the course, even though things might not go your way at the beginning. But you never allow the external, you never allow the, the external change who you are internally. So he stayed, he's been the same person. He's consistent day in and day out from the time he got into the NFL in 17 to who he is now. It's the same person. So it was a blessing when we to get the opportunity to come here and work with Ku. Um, it was a great opportunity just because of the man he is and how he leads by example. And he's been great for our room, particularly for Cam, because you know, Ku was in this position kind of like how Cam was a couple of years ago. And to be able to share that knowledge and his experience, because he he been in that position before was great for our room and it's great for those other players too and that's why I think a lot of our players gravitate to Ku because he wasn't just a, a higher drafted pick as a kicker like fourth or fifth round pick he was undrafted um, he's been through the up and downs he's been through the workout wire traveling and working out with different teams been on the practice squad and then now he's at the position he's at because of the hard work the dedication and staying true to who he is anything else Right. Well, yeah, Coach, what, are, what challenges are, are you all facing with the Washington units this week? I mean, good specialist unit. Mm-hmm. You know, they kicker and punter. Tress does a great job putting the ball all over the place. Uh, Tress Way. Tress yep, Tress Way. Uh, Hopkins, uh, he's been pretty consistent, you know, within the last year and a half. You know, he hit a game winner versus the Giants, actually. You know, so those guys, and then core group wise, they got some speed on the perimeter. And then interior, they got some physical guys with, you know, Hudson. Um, you know, Mayo, those type of guys, Morris, they, they do, or Norris, sorry, they do a good job of covering downfield on kicks. And then they have a good, really good returner that gets north south with uh, DeAndre Carter, it, number one. He does a good job, dual returner for those guys. He's going to make the most out of those plays. And you can see on film, whether it was versus the Giants or versus the Chargers, or, you know, even he was, had a couple, had a return versus Buffalo. But he's a journeyman, has been through a lot of different teams, but he's been consistent with his approach and his fearless running. So we have a great challenge ahead of us this week, and our guys look forward to the opportunity to improve and get better. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'll take care.